The 1MDB embezzlement scandal, which has rocked the business world and left many wondering who's behind it all, has now been linked to Low Tank Joe. Investigators have called it one of the biggest corruption cases ever. Billions of dollars vanished from the Malaysian state fund 1MDB, only to be spent on the political activities of a city prime minister and the lavish lifestyle of the scam's mysterious mastermind, a Chinese businessman called Joe Low. This mysterious man is believed to be the mastermind behind the scandal, and his ties to powerful and influential people all over the world make him a difficult person to track down and arrest. Malaysian businessman Joe Lo fled the country and is now considered a fugitive. The 40-year-old faces charges for money laundering and a litany of other offenses related to the fun placed in his care for many years. Joe Lo is believed to be in hiding overseas, and authorities have offered a reward for information leading to his arrest. Before he was wanted for his role in 1MDB, Joe Lowe led a glamorous life that included paying to party with celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio and dating supermodel Miranda Kerr. In the wake of the scandal, people have been wondering what happened to the man who stole $4 billion from an entire country. Welcome to yet another thrilling and fun video. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel for a library of incredible videos. Also, hit the bell icon to get notified about our newest updates. Joe Lo was born to a moderately wealthy family in Malaysia in 1981. His father taught him the importance of networking early on and also flew in models for parties. He studied at Wharton, where he threw his first elaborate party and became known as the Asian Great Gatsby. And for his 20th birthday, he rented out Shampoo, one of the hottest nightclubs in Philadelphia at the time, for $40,000. As his partying habits developed, Jolo reportedly sent a note to Ivanka Trump, inviting her on a gambling trip to Atlantic City's Trump Plaza Hotel. He later told his friends that she declined because she didn't want to set foot in one of her father's casinos. After college, he returned home with hopes of working for the network he built at Wharton, helping them with investment deals. While this plan didn't work out as he had hoped, he was able to connect Malaysian Deputy Prime Minister Najib Razak with Mubadala Development, an investment fund. This connection gave Jolo status and access to Malaysian banks that lent him billions of dollars. Three years later, Najib Razak became prime minister, and Jolo reinvented himself, becoming the alleged mastermind behind offshore financing. He learned how to set up shell companies and moved large sums of money around, according to prosecutors. As the new prime minister looked for ways to fund his government, Jolo came up with the idea of creating a sovereign wealth fund, and 1MDB was born. He took control of the fund and siphoned $700 million to himself. This initial amount was nothing compared to the more significant sums that came after, giving him access to unlimited wealth. Jolo partied like there was no tomorrow. Expenses for parties went up to six figures as he paid celebrities like Megan Fox, Paris Hilton, and Leonardo DiCaprio to attend his parties. In Billion Dollar Whale, a book about Jolo, the authors write that he spent $85 billion on parties between October 2009 and June 2010. Highlights included running up a $160,000 tab at New York City's The Avenue and sending 23 bottles of Cristal Champagne to Lindsay Lohan's table at One Oak, one of the most high-class nightclubs in New York. Madly in love with Paris Hilton, Jolo contacted her manager in 2009 to see if he could pay her to attend his parties. According to the book, she got paid $100,000 per event. A year later, he rented Paul Allen's super yacht and spent millions on champagne. These bottles were later poured by Jolo and his entourage, which now included Paris Hilton. For her 29th birthday in Las Vegas, Jolo gave Paris $250,000 in gambling chips and gifted her a Cartier watch. He financed the movie The Wolf of Wall Street after the company threw one of Jolo's usual bashes. Celebrities in attendance included Leonardo DiCaprio, Bradley Cooper, and Jamie Foxx. Kanye West and Pharrell performed for guests. Jordan Belfort, the subject of The Wolf of Wall Street and no stranger to fraud, also attended the party. Celebrities were paid huge sums of money to attend his parties. Jolo paid $250,000 to Jamie Foxx, $100,000 to Paris Hilton, and $50,000 to Kim Kardashian. Leonardo DiCaprio was flown on an exclusive private jet to attend Lowe's birthday party and was paid $150,000 and treated to private gambling activities. DiCaprio became one of his closest celebrity friends, and Jolo even gifted him a $9.2 million Basquiat artwork once. Goldman Sachs bankers Roger Ng and Tim Leisner assisted in the sponsorship of Jolo's parties. 
Leisner pleaded guilty and is currently cooperating with the feds. And according to prosecutors, Roger Ng pocketed $35 million from his involvement with Jolo. Besides partying, Jolo invested in real estate and bought luxury homes in New York, Los Angeles, and London. He purchased a private plane and spent around $310 million on art, setting a record for paying the highest price for a Basquiat at $48.8 million. Between 2013 and 2014, he purchased $200 million in jewelry. Miranda Kerr, whom he dated in 2014, received $8 million in gifts. That same year, Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad found evidence of what Lowe had been doing in 1MDB. In 2016, Loretta Lynch, a U.S. attorney, sought to recover more than $1 billion in assets bought using proceeds from 1MDB. Jolo's jet, mansions, and EMI stake were seized. Some of Jolo's friends surrendered their gifts to the government. This included Kerr's $8 million in jewelry and DiCaprio's $13 million in art. Founded in 2009, 1MDB was a state-owned sovereign investment fund co-founded by Najib Razak with the help of financier Jolo in Malaysia. The acronym stands for One Malaysia Development Burhad, and Razak led its advisory board until 2016. It was created to promote development in the country. Between 2009 and 2013, the fund raised billions for joint ventures and investment projects. According to the U.S. Department of Justice, most of the money raised was embezzled and diverted to shell companies and offshore bank accounts linked to Joe Lowe. In 2018, public anger over the scandal heated up, and voters ousted former Prime Minister Najib Razak. Two years later, Razak, who faced 42 charges of abuse of power, money laundering, criminal breach of trust, and losses, was convicted in the first of many trials. Goldman Sachs, which was also involved in the scandal, entered in its first ever guilty plea and agreed to pay $5 billion and a $2.9 billion fine in the U.S. Jolo allegedly led the group of Malaysians who diverted the money invested in the fund into their personal accounts. While he claimed he did consulting work for 1MDB, U.S. prosecutors say he is the mastermind behind creating the shell companies that arranged withdrawals for payoffs and collected proceeds from the fund. He allegedly funneled $27.3 million from 1MDB to a jeweler in New York for a pink diamond necklace for Razak's wife, who was first lady at the time. Although he denies any wrongdoing, Jolo has been charged with money laundering and other offenses in Malaysia and the U.S. Officially, Jolo is now a fugitive and 1MDB is synonymous with crime and investigations. The Malaysian government claims Jolo is now living in Macau, although China denies this. Al Jazeera also reported he's living in the gambling capital, in a house owned by a senior member of the China Communist Party. Regardless of the scandal, some 1MDB projects like the Transportation Hub and a new financial district plan are still going ahead. However, the fund has been reduced to a shell and the finance ministry has picked up its assets and debts. European, American and Asian authorities have coordinated their investigations to follow the money trail 1MDB left behind. They have also coordinated their legal approaches toward asset recovery. What they find could help close loopholes in the global financial system that assist in corruption. The Federal Bureau of Investigation has also said that some people have remained silent in fear of retaliation. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, let us know by giving it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to our channel to watch more interesting and entertaining videos like this one.